Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Carl, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar, Teaching Strategies Using CK12. We're so glad you have joined us. And a special evening welcome to uh, people in Spain and Albania and so many others around the world. We're so glad that you've taken time out of your night and late evening to um, join up and learn ways to do CK12. We've had a great start to the 2018 Certified Educator Program. Thank you for everyone who's joined us already for this first week. We have another week of live sessions next week. And by now, many of you are experts in navigating our CEP Google class, and you're able to find all the assignments and resources there. And then you're also getting very comfortable with the Zoom features. Um, just a reminder, put your questions that you have for our presenters in the Q&A window, and then um, keep the conversation going in the uh, Zoom window. Um, introduce yourself, tell us where you're coming from today, what you teach, and all of that good stuff. Um, if you have any questions, um, any technological issues or anything, we don't expect any inter interruptions to our broadcast, but you can just let us know that as well. I really want to encourage all educators to use Twitter as a great way to share ideas and find out about new ways to use CK12. Here you can see that Tosin tweeted about learning about CK12's interactives. She's helping spread the news about these amazing learning resources, and we really appreciate it. Next, you can see both Helen and Carrie tweeted about the summer program that they're doing with CK12, and I think it's really a great way to reach their communities and spread the word. So we thank that. Thank them, and we want to encourage everyone. Um, if you don't have a Twitter presence, Go establish one, get that digital presence, and really make it something important as part of your professional life. Okay, thanks Carl, and thank you again for all of you who are on this webinar this morning. Um, in this webinar, we're gonna be covering the following topics. We're gonna talk about broad implementation strategies for using CK12. You're going to see different ways to use CK12 either as a core curriculum or as supplemental resources. Next, we'll be sharing easy to implement teaching strategies, which will cover concepts, modalities, interventions, homework, and literacy. Our main goal is that by the end of this session, you come away with specific and actionable strategies to engage your students using CK12 resources. But before we get into the core content of the webinar, um, we're gonna use a poll here to find out a little bit more about you and your experiences. So you're gonna see it on your screen right now. And here's the poll question for this morning. What CK12 resources have you used previously with your students? And you are able to click all that apply. So we wanna know, are you using Flexbooks? Interactives are Plicks and Sims? adaptive practice, study guides, videos, real world applications, or lastly, you're just getting going, you haven't used CK12 with your students yet. We are watching the answers come in here. I think you guys are getting quicker at responding to these polls. We're going to give it a few more seconds and then um, we're happy to share the results with you here. Okay, lock in your final answer. No worries if you don't get a chance to vote. We're going to go ahead and end the poll now and share our results. And maybe I'm, I'm a little surprised by this that, you know, but maybe this is a statement to all of you who are truly here joining us for this program because you're wanting to implement CK12 next year and you need to get some ideas and some tools of how to use it with your students. So that's interesting that 56% of the people on our webinar today um, haven't had the opportunity yet. And that may be coming in a couple of weeks for some of you or maybe uh, a couple months. But um, otherwise we've got, yes, just some various usage of our, our Flexbooks Interactive. It's kind of, kind, of, kind of an even line going down there for the most part. So um, thank you for answering that. 
Uh, just a reminder that uh, we have a resource page. I, I hope you guys are finding these helpful. We've tried to put something on um, the front side and back side of a one page that will serve as a great reminder for you as you start to implement strategies during the school year. You can find that in our Google Classroom or um, I believe Star is putting it in the chat window. Before we get into specific ideas of using CK-12, I'd like to talk about using CK-12 from a higher view. CK-12 began simply as a digital replacement for textbooks. We introduced the idea of a flexbook and it took off from there. These days we offer so much more, but some people are still only using flexbooks. You can use CK-12 as your core curriculum or supplemental. Some schools customize a flexbook and then use a variety of CK-12 modalities like our adaptive practice to also improve student learning. It's their core curriculum and the CK-12 platform works great to help deliver great content. Other schools use a core curriculum other than CK-12 but still supplement it with, that, uh, with CK-12 modalities like our reads, adaptive practice, study guides, concept pages, real world, world applications, and videos. One example is that many schools use CPM, which is College Prep Mathematics, as their core curriculum. This is often mandated by a school or district. It is a great program that I've used myself, and it uses the guided discovery method to teach and build math knowledge. But when a student is sick or on a field trip, they don't have the benefit of the teacher's guidance during that discovery lesson. So teachers give links to the reads on CK-12 to help the student learn what they missed. Also, our other modalities can help reinforce their knowledge. Finally, but quickly trying out our um, adaptive practice, they can see if they understand the concept. Whether it's CPM, Big Ideas, or Engage New York, CK-12 is a great way to supplement that content. Once you've decided to go with CK-12 as your core curriculum, there are two different ways to implement it. The first is to use a CK-12 flexbook, whether you customize it or not along with all the CK-12 modalities. This way offers the comfort of a book, plus all the advantages of improved learning with modern digital resources. Parents like to be, be able to access the Flexbook. It provides a great foundation that they can relate to. The limitations of this is that a Flexbook is still a linear pathway of learning that is a one-size-fits-all solution. But by pairing it with other modalities, personalized learning is achieved. The second way is to use CK-12 as, uh, as the core curriculum is to mix the modalities together without the anchor of a flexbook. Many of our users feel like they don't need a textbook anymore. Instead, it's much more useful to have a variety of modalities for specific differentiated groups. I might break my class up into three groups, the purple group, the green group, and the blue group. I know that the purple group is made up of struggling readers, so they might want to watch a video first, then do an interactive, and finally read a basic level lesson. The green group, on the other hand, might start with an interactive, then do a read, and finally an activity where I give them a writing prompt. So using concept-based modalities, they'll be able to kind of differentiate, and we'll talk more about this later. Remember, you can use the CK-12 flexbooks and modalities as is with no customization needed. It is quality content that has been written by proven subject matter experts. Then when you're ready, you can begin the customization process by changing the scope and sequence to match what is used at your school or district. Also localizing this content helps engage the students and make it more relevant to their lives. In the end, you'll end up with quality content that truly improves student learning. We have many public and private schools that use CK-12 simply because it is a platform that helps them deliver the highest quality content possible to their students. Okay, um, our team here in-house Star and Michaela and Katie, everyone's answering your questions. Um, looks like we've got one in the Q&A for you, Carl, already. Um, is it easy to differentiate the flex books without the students knowing their books are slightly different? I would say it's probably the best practice to differentiate 
in like assignments of content. That's when it's, it, you know, we'll talk about like that a little bit later also, but the key thing is it, I think it's a lot more work to actually create a whole different flexbook for different levels of students within the same class versus when you're when you're making an assignment about osmosis it's very easy for me to take the be the basic level lesson or read and assign that to the purple group and no one's going to know that that's a different read that other people are reading because they have a whole list of things so i think that's a probably a better way to go is to not just create a whole separate book for them but kind of break it down and use the concept based learning method as trying to differentiate. All right, so we're going to move on now and um, move and begin talking about our easy to implement teaching strategies. This to me is really exciting. Whenever I go to an educator conference, I always hope there are a couple things that I can use in my classroom the next week. If it's all theoretical, it's hard for me to justify that it's worth my time. So for the rest of this session, we'll be discussing ways to use CK-12 that you can implement immediately in your class. The first set of teaching strategies all have to do with CK-12 concepts and modalities. Un up until 2012, CK-12 was simply a flexbook company, digital textbooks. Then in 2012, we broke up our content into 5,000 concepts. We created concept pages each with a variety of modalities of learning that concept. So right now we're gonna be discussing the following ideas. Linking to concept pages, embedding various modalities into a lesson, assigning real world applications, using PLICs during class, taking the PLICs open discussion questions to a deeper level, using simulations for physics and chemistry, and maximizing the standards browser to find great content. Uh, to help us start thinking about learning using concepts, um, we're going to watch a short video. You're going to see our co-founder and executive director, Niru Kosla, help us understand this fundamental shift in learning. When I was a kid, I could never understand how electrons kind of move through, uh, you know, uh, above. How, how does that happen? In reality, a teacher doesn't really teach a book. A really teacher is teaching a concept of, in a book. So students set goals for their learning. The teacher set up the conditions for all the available resources which is, you know, 10 different kids in one class may take 10 different paths and approach the resources in CK-12 in 10 different ways. It provides kids who maybe learn more traditionally a method, who maybe need a visual aid, a method, you know, for example, we're doing factoring today and we're learning about algebra tiles and some kids are like, oh, now I understand it, you know, whereas yesterday maybe they weren't you know, picking up the concept as easy. If you think about, you know, as a teacher, you want to teach someone the grain that you can teach so that you can build on that knowledge. By breaking down a subject into different concepts, the teacher can pick and choose a curriculum that is in the order um, and at the level that they want. I love CK-12 content because it provides a starting point for me. Um, if I feel my students need more background on a subject or a concept, it gives me a place to search for concepts to reinforce what we were learning um, that were maybe not embedded originally in the lesson, but that were provided through CK-12 website in general. So we'd love teachers to think about moving to the concept-based learning so you can catch where the gaps lie for each student. Concept-based learning is a great way to start implementing personalized learning. Each CK-12 concept page allows students to learn it their way. They can pick and choose different modalities and then use practice to see if there are any gaps. Digital tools are really changing the way that our students can learn. All right, so let's begin. Our first teaching strategy is offering links to specific concepts and modalities. 
I think our concept pages are the, the most magical part of what we can offer because each one of these pages represents the idea of learn it your way. Or for a teacher, if you go there, it's teach it your way. We list on this page a variety of modalities. So for motion, you can see we have reads, which are lessons, simulations, which clicks, interactives, videos, activities, study aids, and I'm sure if we scroll down further, you get practice and other things. So we offer a whole wealth of ways. And we know that sometimes with our students, they're not always in the mood to read a big block of academic text. So maybe they need to start off with a video or two and then try an interactive. And it's a great place to send them. Now, when we're designing activities for our class for a lesson you know often we want to get most of our students through the same activity their whole class activities but if a student is absent like i mentioned earlier and i know that we covered motion as part of that class it's really great to take this url and paste it into a, an email to the students that were absent or listed on my google classroom or put it in my other lms's under links and the students can see exactly what did we cover. And it's a great way to keep on learning. Um, it's easy to include any modality because remember on CK12, every read, every video, interactive or activity has a direct URL. So you can put links, direct links to anything you see on this page here and the students can do it. And because it's a direct link, you can share that in a variety of places. And we'll talk about how even like you can share these things with parents really, really easily. The next teaching strategy is build a playlist inside of your lesson. So when you're putting together a lesson or a read for a, a lesson, it is really good at the bottom to kind of offer a keep on learning section. You know, normally with a lesson, we try not to overload it with too much content, but to offer some ideas if the student still wants to learn more, you could put a link directly to the CK12 concept page, of course, and say, keep learning on that. You choose what you do. But specifically, you can put a list of links inside of your lesson that you know are really applicable or really valuable as part of this lesson. So in this example here, you can see that we've put a link to a Plix and it's about vertical and horizontal transformations. And then there's a really good real world application called shifting positions. And then there's a video shifts of square root functions. And I think the students understand then that this isn't required, but is enhancement to what they're learning. The other benefit of this is if you put the content in like this, students can maybe know to go do it without you needing to create a separate assignment. But remember, when they go and do these things, you are not given any feedback because it isn't part of an assignment. So that's building a playlist inside of your lesson. One of the more exciting things on CK12 are the 2000 real world applications that can offer a connection between a concept and the real world. And these are really powerful because often they build on what the student already knows and it engages them because it's things from their lives. I love starting my class with the CK12 um, real world application as a warm up because it gets the students kind of coming in from you know, lunch or from passing period and really beginning to focus on what we're going to be talking about. But it's not just a bunch of exercises. It's, you know, like in this case, it's about linear programming and it's about diet optimization models. And so it really begins the students thinking about how does this, how does this work in my life? Um, and I, I think it works well that way. Um, the other thing is you can reach higher level thinking using an RWA to help students bring ideas together using analysis and modeling. You know, modeling is part of Common Core and both um, new generation science standards is really important. And analysis is also one of the new higher level thinking ideas that are really important at the core of what makes these two new uh, standards different. And I think the more we can offer students to model and analyze, the better. 
these are really easy. You can actually take the content from these and add these into your Flexbook really, really easily if you're putting together a Flexbook. Or you can simply, like here on the orange button there, assign to class. And you can easily create an assignment of a real world application once you've found it. So I think real world applications are worth looking at. You'll find them through the concept pages, and there are over 2,000 covering math and science. Many of you by now have had a chance, hopefully, to play with our really exciting interactive called PLIX. And I'll remind you that PLIX stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. Yesterday, there was a really great session all about using our PLIX and our SIMS. And we think this is a great implementation of digital in the learning classroom today because it does allow the students to interact with the concept. It allows them to, to really feel, figure out what's going on. And I think, you know, the one thing that we've tried to do with our Plix is keep it simple. When um, our founder, Niru, was thinking about this as an idea, she kept telling the team, you got to keep it simple, like keep it to one or two concepts, keep it to one or two variables so that the students can, can really access the information. So this is an example of a lunar phase plix where, you know, they're, they're, where the sun is compared to the earth and the moon and how that all works. And the students, because they get to move it and they're in charge of it, they can really have a deeper understanding than just reading about it. And this is definitely something that is an active learning activity and the active part is super important. I love to use Plix as a warm-up, just like with real-world applications. Students come in, they're thinking about everything, they're talking about all these things, and to help them get focused on today's concept, it's a really good thing that maybe it's already listed in your Google Classroom, you've made a little warm-up assignment, and you tell them, okay, go ahead when you come in and do this Plix. So they come here, there's some instructions, drag the red point around, figure it out, and then the challenge me questions occur. Um, it also can be used as a mid-class activity where if you're, you've introduced the idea and now you wanna give them a chance to expand their knowledge. Finally, of course, you can use it as an exit ticket as a way of them kind of cementing their knowledge before they leave their classroom. This to me, if, if, I, if all these teaching strategies today, this is the one that I really want you to think about implementing in your class if it's appropriate for what you teach. But the, the PLIX, I think, are super powerful and are really a great way to use CK12 to promote deeper learning in your classroom. I just want to jump in real quick, Carl. Uh, I'm looking at a lot of great um, chat messages that are being sent, but some of them are just coming into panelists. Um, like somebody responded, the playlist is a great idea. I had no idea that was possible. Just a reminder to you guys in the chat window, make sure you're sending your messages to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you're typing. Excellent. All right, so we'll continue on now with another great idea of how to use Plix. So all PLIX have a few questions as part of them. Remember, the PLIX is a learning tool. It's not an assessment tool. So nothing is given, no feedback's given to the teacher about you know, how they did or anything. It, the whole goal was to have them use the PLIX to help learn. And because of that, we have a series of questions afterward, which then help the student evaluate, did I learn this correctly? So it's, it's more a process of self-discovery as opposed to the process of gotcha. One of the more exciting things is that all the plicks end with a open discussion question. And these are questions that we don't give the answers to and we hope promote some higher level thinking. And usually it'll take the concept that's being talked about and then encourage the student to bring in other knowledge or at least deeper knowledge from a different direction. So like in this case, the open discussion question is, if the train started to climb from an elevation of zero feet instead of 10 feet, how would the equation of the track change? And remember, in this lesson, we're talking about slope intercept form of equations. So, you know, that slope intercept, you know, where it crosses the y axis is really important. And if you're starting from zero, it's very different than if you're starting from 10 feet. So what this does is gives your students an opportunity to think about a what-if situation. 
And I, you know, one thing you can do with this is have the students use it as a writing prompt. When you're done with the plicks that I'm using as a warm up, go ahead and write down a, a solution based on what you've experienced to this open discussion question. And we love when our students write about our, our content. Writing across the curriculum is a key component in education now. Another way that you can use this is do a think pair share where the students think about what the answer is and then they pair up and they discuss that with each other and then they report one of those people reports out to the class what they came up with. Finally, one of the more exciting ways is that a lot of these open discussion questions link through to the Plix forum in the CK12 Cafe. And if you go to the CK12 Cafe, you will see that the Plix forum is one of the most popular forums with the most usage. And, you know, within one Plix, you'll see that there can be hundreds of comments on it because students like talking about things and especially if there's no one right answer or there's an, you know, a variety of approaches this is what we need them to do as part of common core we're constantly looking at what are the different ways we can arrive at the same place so you know the journey on how we get there is just important as the destination so definitely go look in the plix forum and think about how can you use these open discussion questions to promote deeper learning. Alrighty, so up next is our simulations. And remember, we have simulations for um, physics, about 80 or so for physics, and we have about 15 for um, chemistry. But they can be used by math teachers and also by middle school, and even we've been in classrooms where we've seen them using sims with fifth graders. So it's not just for physics students, these sims. And I, I really encourage you to look through because there's some powerful content that's available there. So using simulations during class, there's a couple ways. You can come in and use it as a brief activity. Okay, You don't have to go and do a lot of in-depth looking at like what everything means. You can simply go there, pull out one thing that it teaches, and then move on. But you can also spend half your period or your whole lesson involving the sim. So it's definitely something that you should take a look at, especially if you teach physics, chemistry, any of the middle school content, or if you teach mathematics. One of the things that we want to point out that not everyone knows about is there's some really great teacher walkthrough tutorial videos. Our staff members have put together a kind of an introduction to the sim. So if you're a little like a little apprehensive about using them, you're like, how exactly would I do this with my students? That's exactly what these videos do. And you're going to find them available on at the in the menu bar of each one of these sims and I really encourage you to go watch some of these and familiarize yourself with the kind of learning that's behind the simulation and maybe after you've watched the video you'll feel a little bit more confident to use them with your students knowing what you can get out of the simulation and also what your students need to learn another thing that we've done for all the physics um, simulations is we've done companion worksheets and these are available in both PDF form that you can print and electronic form and these worksheets are a way to enhance and expand the learning of the simulation so once again I would actually um, encourage you to go find these on on the um, within each sim take a look at them and really figure out how could you incorporate what we're offering here with your students. And you're gonna find that the simulations are super rich, deep thinking activities that there really isn't any other thing like it. You know, I know that there are other organizations like FET who do, who do some simulations, and I think ours are a different type of simulation. FETs are great, and I really think that the, ours are a companion to what they're doing. So take a look at these and, you know, figure out how the simulations can be used in your classroom. And we've tried to offer a lot of content for it. And know that for chemistry, both the walkthrough video tutorials for teachers and the companion worksheets are being worked on this very summer. And our team has said that by the end of the summer, they're gonna get, they're gonna get produced and they'll be available to you. 
Finally, in this section, we have our standards browser. Okay, if you're signed in as a teacher, you can go to the menu bar and you're going to see a drop down menu of standards and you have access to both the Common Core math standards and the next generation science standards. This is a great way. Let's say I teach math and I'm in an eighth grade and I know I need to cover 8.g.3. And that is something that we as eighth grade math teachers would do. So you can come here and you can see exactly the content that is offered for that standard on CK12. And so it's a direct link to the concept page. And then once you're on the concept page, you can choose which of the modalities you're going to use to teach that concept. The same is true for next generation science standards. You know, like we have high school physical science 1-6. And then we have a list of concepts there available. So the standards browser are really a great way to do this because all of our content there, even if you're not from an NGSS or a Common Core state, you know, the states that are not doing Common Core, it's amazing how they're, they're Common Core-esque, meaning that they're often like 95% aligned with Common Core, but they can't call it Common Core because that's not a good word in their state. So come to these standards browsers and find a lot of great content in the format that you need it for teaching your, um, your standards. Okay, we're gonna pause there for just a minute. Um, looks like most of the um, questions that we've marked as we're gonna respond to live. Carl's gonna share his um, web browser here. Um, kind of are in two buckets, really. Um, Carl, there's a lot of people interested in knowing how do they see all of the modalities offered for a concept. So I think they're wanting to see um, how to find a concept page. And then the other big bucket was how do you get to the index of all the sims and find a worksheet? So if you want to show them those two things, that'd be awesome. All right, so here we go. Um, from the CK12 homepage, we're going to go search for a concept like I had brought up motion there. So I'm going to type it in and you'll see that we offer a physics concept of that and then a general concept. So motion. And this gives me all the modalities for motion. So you can see this is what we saw. We have one read, four simulations, one here and three more there. A plix. We have one plus eight video, nine videos, an activity, study aids, and then our adaptive practice. So this is how you find concepts. The other way to find concepts is to quickly go into from the main page, the branch that you're talking about, like physics, and then you're going to see all the different concepts listed there, and you can go to the concept page that way. So there's two different ways to get to these concept pages. You can browse through there, or you can simply search at the top. From the home page too, you also have access to the browse page for simulations. And I think, Lindsay, that was the next question. So we're gonna come here, and we're gonna go we're presented with all of the different sims. And you can see I have physics sims and I have chemistry sims here. So I'm going to go here and do, going to go do on any of these here. I love the seesaw one. Can the daughter lift the mom? Is that a thing that can actually happen? Okay. So um, on this here, you can see we can assign it to class. We can see what concepts are there. But over in the ellipses over here, kind of the sideways ellipses, you can see I have worksheet available. And that's how you access the worksheet is through the ellipses on the side. All right. Any more questions right now or should we push forward? I think lastly, just um, a couple of people asked, where do you get to the standards browser? So you had screenshots of it, but why don't you show them where they find that on the home page? Sure. So let's go back to ck12.org. And from the top menu up here, you'll see standards. And you scroll down and you can access Common Core or NGSS. Perfect. Keep your questions coming, everybody. I'm going to share my screen again. And we're going to move on to the next part of this presentation, which is about our easy to implement um, teaching strategies here. 
So the next section is all about intervention, using CK-12 to help you deal with intervention, to help fill in gaps with students. We'll be covering adaptive practice, pre and post assessments using the quiz feature, and differentiated classes for different levels. So the first one is our adaptive practice. And I know that we had a great session the other day about adaptive practice. If you didn't get a chance to see it, make sure you do it next week. Because I think adaptive practice is one of the most powerful things that we offer at CK12. The main thing about adaptive practice is that you get to learn at the appropriate level, or the student gets to learn at the appropriate level. Using CK12's machine learning, our system quickly adjusts to the student's level and then builds on it. So that means kind of everyone starts out with the first couple questions the same, but after a few questions, you, it branches off and starts make, giving you content that is appropriate. Next, it offers content to fill in your gaps. So when you don't understand something, it'll tell you like 89% of students did better after they watch this video. 70% of students did better after they do this interactive. So this is intervention in a way that you could never do if you have 150 students. Let CK-12's machine learning and really rich content help your students fill in those gaps. Finally, there are reports to help both the students and teachers understand what the progress was made here how many questions they answered, how much time was spent, what level the questions were, and which questions they missed. You can actually see the responses that they gave if you need that information to help you diagnose what exactly is going on. So spend some time with adaptive practice. We have over 150,000 questions in our adaptive practice, and we're constantly adding more. Um, they cover all of math and all of science and even some spelling in there. So you'll see it's a really great tool that you can use to with your students to, to kind of intervene when they're having trouble. Another thing you can do is create some quizzes as pre and post tests. And these, you can use CK-12's question, or you can come up with your own question. And this is really great because it allows you to see the progress, it shows the growth over time, and it allows you to kind of figure out where are they starting from and how much work will you need to do as a teacher with them on these concepts. One of the things that people ask us all the time is how do I use CK-12 to differentiate from my different levels in my class? And you know, the good news is I can make, I referenced already the green group and the purple group and the blue group. And so on CK-12, those are all what we call classes. And there are many classes and you can create a separate assignment for the purple group as the green group, even though they're sitting in the same class in the same period. And there's no stigma with these digital classes because everyone's just working on their computer. So there's nobody knows that, okay, I'm in the purple group and I'm, you know, I have, um, you know, some reading issues that I'm being supported with. Also, you can still assign things to the entire class. You can make assignments that are class wide, but when needed, you can differentiate and make sure that each student's getting content at the level they need, and then you get the feedback on how they did. And this is one that I really encourage you to spend some time thinking about in your class. Should everybody be getting the same assignment in my class, or what could I offer certain students that might be different than I offer the whole class? So spend some time on this. Maybe this could be one of the things as part of your assignment today that you're working with that you're going to talk about and really think about how to implement in your class. All right, and finally, um, no, sorry, our next section of easy to implement teaching strategies will show how to use CK-12 for homework. Homework can be the bane of any teacher's existence, and well, CK-12 has some solutions. We're going to do adaptive practice for homework, and we're going to talk about how would you um, flip your classroom with CK-12 resources. So adaptive practice can be a really good tool to serve as homework. I have teachers now who tell me, Carl, I don't assign anything for homework other than 
adaptive practice. Because compared to the black line masters that I got from my big box of tools that that large publisher gave me, you know, the problem is the students struggle on that. If you don't understand it, answering 50 questions is not going to help you. And if you do understand it, answering 50 questions is a waste of your time. So this is so much better than a worksheet because it is adaptive. A lot of times I've seen teachers using this say, okay, here are the eight concepts that we've assigned, that we've gone over this week, or that we will be going over, and you need to finish the CK-12 adaptive practice on those eight concepts by Friday. So they give them the thing, and the students, they finish it whenever they need to. And the students love that they can easily complete the assignment using the CK-12 app on their phone. This is really convenient for them. They can do it on the way to the game or on the bus ride on the way home. And remember, the adaptive practice is not assessment. It's a learning tool. So that's why we offer them content to fill in their gaps. That's why we offer them hints that were written by real teachers. So adaptive practice is a really important tool that can be used to help students and teachers really reinforce the content they learned in class. One exciting thing that you can do is you can flip your classroom with CK-12. You know, I, when I taught geometry one year, a few years ago, I flipped my class and I made little videos every day and that was fun, but it was a lot of work. And I'm like, you know, somebody probably did this before. And, you know, homework can be fun now with CK-12 videos. CK-12 has produced quite a number of videos. And kind of one of the exciting things is we, um, Sal Khan, who did Khan Academy, made us a whole series of algebra videos before his site had taken off. So we have some original uh, Sal Khan videos here as part of CK-12 algebra. But remember, not only can you assign videos, but you can also assign clicks and sims as part of the learning that happens at home. Because remember, the stuff they can do at home is more the basic level stuff. We want, we want them to do the basic level knowledge so by the time they get into your classroom, they're doing the higher level thinking, and that is supported by group work and your being in the classroom guiding discussions, etc. So we don't want the higher level thinking to happen in isolation at home. That's the stuff we want happening. And that's the philosophy of flipping in the, their classroom. Then after they do the basic level stuff at home, give them a little adaptive practice to do also outside of the classroom to really check if they've understood the basic level stuff that they were supposed to learn. So flipping the classroom to me is a really great way to use CK-12 to make your life easier. And I always say teachers will use tools if it makes their lives easier and CK-12 will help in this area. Up next we have um, improving literacy. And it is our final set of easy to implement teaching strategies. Um, let's get started. I think we have a video, Lindsay, in this next section here. Yes, let's play it right now. A student has more than one learning model, learns through multiple modalities. Um, a feature that CK-12 provides is the highlighting with different colors. So I'm able to not only emphasize a key point, but I'm able to assign it to a specific color that can also trigger um, another, maybe another memory for them. All righty. Thank you, Anna, so much. Uh, we, you know, the day we went and filmed in her classroom, it, it was amazing because she has the students use different colors for different things. So like the topic sentence is one color in the highlighter, and then she has the supporting facts in another color. So you can see here like the topic sentence is a yellow, and then the supporting facts are in the blue. And you know, it really helped the students develop some very good academic reading tools to help them process content of academic language. And as you know, highlighting is synthesizing. So we really know that the students have, um, they highlight topic sentence and supporting points to really understand the text better. 
And you know, we, you've heard the expression talking to the text. This annotation tool can also help the students summarize. So you can say, okay, I want you to write a summary of this whole lesson in two sentences. And then the students write their, their annotation and it appears at the bottom. So all of the notes that they highlight and all the annotations they make appear in a little summary section at the bottom. So when, when they're studying for a test or a quiz, all they have to do is to go to the notes and highlight section and look through the things that they've, they've highlighted. So try this out and see what happens here because I think it's a really powerful tool that we offer on CK12 um, that can be a tool that the students will use for years to come and throughout college. One of the more exciting things we offer as part of our content on CK12 is the ability to use Google Translate built in. So if you go to the bottom of most content pages on CK12, you can translate it into any of the Google Translate languages, including Malagasy or Nepali. So whatever the content they need is available to possibly help them further. And I, I, I'm fluent in Spanish, and I know that even in the last three years, the Spanish translations have gotten much better. I know they crowdsource a lot of these things to help improve it all the time. But what I've seen in classroom is when a student on their Chromebook has a uh, CK12 lesson in English, they can have their phone out with their home language on their phone of the same lesson. So as they're reading in English here, if there's something they don't understand, they quickly glance over to their phone and see, oh, that's what it is they're talking about. So it's a, it's a technique that I've seen several times and I think is really powerful because it's helping them develop language as they learn the core content, which we know is one of the most important things. I also want to point out that um, we have Spanish books for many of our math and science um, branches that have been translated by native speakers. This was done through um, work with uh, the Intel Foundation, and we've worked with them to create these really wonderful books that were not just machine translated, but were actually created by Spanish speakers. Finally, one of the more exciting teaching um, strategies I can offer you is CK12 helps you involve your parents. You know, I, I am a parent myself, and it's very frustrating to me when I ask my son, so is there a math book for your course? And he goes, no, really, we get a bunch of PDFs, and there's a Google folder, but you don't have access to it. And, you know, as a parent, I'm like, whoa, okay, then what do I do? So the, the thing I love about CK12 is that you can send your parents a URL to the concept page that you're covering. And you can also send a URL to a Flexbook that you are using in your class or that you've customized. And parents understand a Flexbook. It has a table of contents. They can figure out, oh, you guys are in unit three right now on section four, and you're studying congruent triangles in geometry. So all of a sudden, the, the parents are involved in a way where they don't feel cut off from the content. And remember, because of the translation feature, it is easy for the parents then to take that content and have Google translate it into whatever the parent's home language is. So we, we've seen that parents are much happier using um, CK12 content with their students' classes and not being shut out just because they're not, they don't have access to some Google folder. So probably at this point, your head is spinning. We've gone over so much here, but you know, there are a few good ideas, hopefully, that are moving around in your head. Carl, I'm going to have you share your screen again, and let's, let's tackle some of these questions that are in the Q&A. Um, trying to see what the trends are. We have, you know, some people are still asking questions about Sims and Plex. Um, actually, we've had a couple of people talk about internet activity. Excuse me if you already talked about this. Um, maybe share about our offline reader and then um, people asking about the highlights and note taking feature that you showed of where those will show up if they're using you know, a learning management system. How can people see the assignments? Great. 
I've just covered a lot of information and, and I will try to clarify it as much as possible right now. One thing I encourage you to do is go to the very bottom of the page and down here, you're gonna see tools and apps. And this is where you're gonna find direct links to the App Store and the Google Play Store. And so the first one you're gonna see here is our Flexbook app, which allows for offline usage of our Flexbooks. And this can be CK12 Flexbooks, but also any community contributed Flexbook or a Flexbook that you, you customize yourself. So you'll get the apps here. We have a physics simulation app, which then allows you to um, access the Sims offline on any device with a large enough screen, which is like a tablet or bigger. Finally, I talked about the CK12 practice app. And this is the one that allows students to complete assignments when they aren't, you know, on their, on their smartphone or their um, mobile device. And I'll just mention too, on this page, we have all the information about our links to various LMSs, including Google Classroom. Um, but let's go into a Flexbook right now. And I always love my biology book. I think it's a great book. Remember, once I click biology, if you haven't done this yet, you're gonna wanna click from concepts over to Flexbook textbooks. And this is where we're gonna find the variety of, of biology books. So that's perfect, Carl, because somebody was asking where they find Spanish translated books on our site, and I'm seeing one right there. Yeah. So you can see at the, um, we offer a variety of biology books, and um, the Spanish books that are available are going to be available underneath the English books here. So we can see CK12, Conceptos, Biología, and that's listed here. And once again, that is a Spanish book translated by a native speaker or several native speakers. Uh, but we're gonna go into the English version now for the benefit of all of our users, including my friend, oh, I guess one's from Spain, so the Spanish one could have worked, but Albany would, uh, the Albania would prefer to have um, English, I would assume. So let's go inside here. Once again, here's a link to the offline reader. If you're using a Chrome device, like a Chromebook or a laptop, this is where you access the offline reader so you can access it when you're not connected to the internet. But let's go in, let's talk about a nice controversial subject like evolution. Um, and let's go to uh, Darwin. There's, once again, controversial, here we are. So let's say we're doing this um, lesson on Darwin. Now, if you look over to the right here, we're gonna see both a highlighting um, symbol and this is the add notes thing. So I'm gonna go choose the highlighting thing here, and I'm gonna come down, and why do they look at me? Darwin's thin, is famous scientist, is that it's well deserves. Darwin's theory of evolution represents a giant leap in human understanding and explains and unifies all biology. Okay, that's really important to me. And then maybe later, I want the students to summarize something. So I'm gonna go click on the annotation tool, and I highlight the thing I'm gonna summarize. This is a summary of everything that I have just read. And then I could keep typing. And the really cool thing, as I mentioned before, you moved to the bottom of the page and there's now a notes and highlights thing where everything that I highlighted and everything that I annotated, the whole thing plus my annotation is listed here. And it's a great way to, add, to, um, to summarize and to study for tests. What's next here? Um, Actually, if you don't mind, Carl, let me go back to the keynote presentation here. I know our team's still working on a lot of the things in the Q&A window, but Carl, why don't you take a look at what's going on in there and um, what would be most helpful to demonstrate. But I want to do some of the program information before we sign off on the hour mark. Um, again, just referencing this resource page, uh, you, you've been too busy presenting, Carl, you haven't been able to see the chat, but um, people are really excited about this session. We had some people saying that um, they felt like this was really, quote, bringing it all together, which I love that. We might have to rename this session, bringing it all together, because it is. Um, for those of you who have taken several of our webinars, this session is designed to like, okay, now that you know what all these tools can do, what are you going to do when you get back to your classroom? Um, so we will post this video. It sometimes takes us, you know, 
24 hours to get the video posted on YouTube and then in our Google Classroom. You can always subscribe to our YouTube channel if that's your preferred method of getting you know, notifications of our videos. Um, so you can rewatch this as much as you need to. You've got this resource page. Um, and then our team is always here. Once you get back to the school year and you're like, ah, I need a little help with a certain topic, you can always email us and we're gonna, we're gonna help you bring these teaching strategies to your classroom. Um, the session assignment, we do have an assignment, um, teaching strategies for using CK12. Um, those assignments, we're asking that they are all finished within, um, by the end of the month. At, on July 31st, we would like all completed work in, and then the first couple weeks of August, we reconcile our records, and we will be issuing certificates to our newly minted um, Certified Educators 2018. Um, feedback form, thank you if you have already utilized this. If you haven't and you have just, it's, it's like a two minute form. If you have just a couple of minutes to tell us what you're liking, um, what we could be doing better, um, take a second and fill out this form. We really appreciate the feedback that you give us and we have conversations about your input. Um, so thank you for your time in doing that. A couple of um, kind of pop-up sessions that have happened since we launched this program is we have an upcoming release of what we're calling Flexbooks 2.0. And um, one thing that I was thinking as Carl was giving you the demonstrations of highlighting, um, I can give you a little sneak peek, Flexbooks 2.0. Um, they're looking at a release where you're gonna be able to download the highlighted notes. Um, that's something that's currently not available in our Flexbooks, but that's one of the exciting things about Flexbooks 2.0 is being able to um, create a PDF of your highlighted notes. So if you wanna see this and so many other features, our Chief Technology Officer, Meryl Shaw, he is going to give a demonstration, just a walkthrough of what you guys can expect when we release Flexbooks 2.0. All of your hard work this summer is still gonna be valid. It's not that it's gonna override anything that you're doing right now. It's just gonna enhance it. Um, join us on Monday, 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time. You can register in our Google Classroom if you would like to attend. It's gonna be a short session. It does not count as one of your core live webinars, but if you are curious, you're, you're all in on Flexbooks, come see Flexbooks 2.0. Um, another thing, our, um, our executive director and co-founder, Niru Kosala, she did me and asked me, she did, sorry, she did and asked me anything um, a couple months ago, but uh, she's back. Now that you guys have been through the program, as you have questions, um, you know, philosophical education questions, questions about why CK12 does certain things or the future of CK12, this is your chance to join us live and Niru is going to be tackling all of your questions. If you have not signed up for that yet, you can register in our Google Classroom Wednesday, July 18th at 11 Pacific time. Um, we would love for you to join. And again, like she's, she's open. She's open to anything you guys have to say. Um, should be an exciting session. And then lastly, we're gonna send out an email about this just to, for extra clarification. But next Friday, we want you guys to have an opportunity to talk to each other. Usually this is a kind of a one-way thing. If we talk and you guys have a chat window that you can talk in, but we're gonna put you in Zoom breakout rooms. It's a feature of Zoom where we can take our educators who, um, my Midwest people, you, if you join the Midwest educators live chat on Friday, July 20th, we're gonna take that group of people and we're gonna break you into small enough groups that if you choose to, you can turn on your microphone, you could even turn on your camera if you want, and you guys can have a conversation about what's going on in the Midwest. We want you to have a chance to network with people who are in your region or people who are in your area, like our homeschool teachers. We want you to be able to show up to our live chat and be able to talk to each other, higher education. Um, you can register for these in the Google Classroom and um, we'll be sending out an email with the times, um, with the time slots listed for Friday, July 20th. And again, it's optional, um, but hopefully it'll enhance your experience with this program. And so thank you. Um, don't forget, we are hashtag CK12 certified, or you can follow us, like us at CK12 Foundation, and then jumpstart at ck12.org is the email address we'd like you to use as you guys are having questions. And um, we're about at the hour mark. So if you need to sign off and all of your questions have been answered, um, thanks for joining us. We're gonna see you back next week, I hope. Um, but for those of you who have unanswered questions, Carl's gonna stay on. He's gonna take his screen back over live here and we're gonna start going through the Q&A. 
Sounds good, Lindsay. Well, thanks to everybody that's still with us now, and we will stay on as long as you have questions. We'll sit around here and answer them. So um, it's been a really exciting week with so much learning. And I, I, like I said, for me, the Twitter conversations are so interesting. And I love hearing how people are implementing and how, you know, what they're excited about. And I think that that's a great way to create a community of, of all of us involved in this great kind of learning revolution. All right, so let's go back to the beginning here. And um, how do you get to an index of all the sims? And so I'm going to go ahead, and I think we showed you that. You can click on this here, but I'm going to show you another way of doing that. Um, I'm going to go up to the URL, and ck12.org slash sims is another direct way to get into the sims. And the same is true for ck12.org slash plicks. And that loads up the Plix browse page. Finally, I'm going to keep showing you little shortcuts here if they help. One of my favorite ones is ck12.org slash overview. And this is a great URL that you can share with people that you know, your peers and your colleagues, which then has a great overview page of all the exciting resources you've been learning about this week. And there's a two minute video that Lindsay and her team put together for each resource. Um, so if you take a look at these, especially the adaptive practice one, trying to get more people involved with that, the interactives, how to create assignments, the cafe forums, all the LMS integrations, all that information is here, including an easy to download PDF flyer about CK12 that has all this content on it. So I encourage you to use the overview page to do that. So let's go back now to, I'm juggling screens here, of course, so I'm gonna look here. Uh, I got index there as a teacher. Okay, so there's a question about the Plix, so let's go over to the Plix. Uh, ck12.org slash Plix. And the question is, where do the students write their answer? And that's a great question. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now. And let's pick an interesting geometry Plix here. Um, like this is a really fun one. Definition of a line segment. And you'll notice if you've used Plix before, we've really upped the game with uh, the Plix now with some beautiful graphics that go along with them. Um, and this one is obviously talking about different line segment lengths and distance and things. So as we come in here, when we're done with the Plix, we go and answer the questions. And oh, I'm not going to get this one right because I don't want to read all that. Um, but you can see this is a fill in the blank one, and I didn't get too many of those right, sorry about that. And here's um, a true false question that I happen to get right, and here's this one. Remember, there are also hints available for our Plix, and these are hints written by real classroom teachers. So that's exactly the kind of help that you need. All right, so here's, I think, where we get to um, uh, Annika's question, that where are the students supposed to um, discuss this. Now normally it says discuss with your class, but there's no space on this page to do it. I happen to have come across one that has an online discussion happening in the Plix corner in the CK12 cafe. So let's go take a look at it. So you could have your class add to this discussion here and um, post an answer here like you know they can I'm not going to post it because it's live on the site but this is where those discussions can happen you also could create a Google classroom form that they fill out as a little check for understanding um, so make sure you go spend some time looking at that and it's to me it's a really powerful way to, to use the clicks to promote higher level thinking all right and then up next Somebody was still asking about the Sims um, uh, saying, where do you go to get that worksheet again? I heard him say ellipses and I know that part, but where did it begin on the CK12 homepage? Sure, we're at the CK12 homepage. As I mentioned, we're gonna scroll down to the four explore circles and let's click on the first one. And then we open up, let's prom night. We all just live through prom night. What size mirror do you need, et cetera? So this is now the sim, and then here's the sandbox of the sim, very exciting. But to come find the worksheets, you click over here, and 
the ellipses on the right hand side and then you'll see worksheet here and it brings up the worksheet. And you'll notice there's an option to download it. And also, if you'd like to help us translate this, we'd love your help because we'd love it translated by native speakers. So if you are familiar, if you fluently speak another language, help us with all the people that speak that language. Currently, we've done Brazil and German and Korean are some of the options that we've, we've offered on these. And we're, we're not totally done with those yet, but they're in progress. All right, uh, I see a question here. Uh, where do we register for Flexbook 2.0? Do you, I assume you mean the um, a live session that's coming up Monday with our CTO, Meryl Shaw, but you go into the Google Classroom there and you'll see an opportunity to register for that, um, for that session with Meryl. Um, but if you mean in general, like how do you sign up to use Flexbooks 2.0, they will audibly, automatically be available for CK12 books at um, the end of this summer, and then for community contributed books a few months after that. So come look for that because we're really excited to see the new version of Flexbooks available from CK12. And Lindsay, it looks like we have cleared it out and we are done with this um, session. So hopefully now you're very excited about all the new things you've learned today and that you will go and have kind of fun time exploring more on CK12. Reminder that this afternoon we have a Common Core book session coming up. Please join us for that at 3 p.m. California time. And until then, enjoy learning.